Hello, and welcome to my channel, AB Make It Artwork, where we do what we do to make that artwork for you. And if you're new to my channel, maybe hit that subscribe button. Join the AB Creative Crew. We do sketchy art things. Today's video is going to be an art ramble about placement, composition, and the male gaze. What I hope to do with this video is to explain what these things are, uh, bring up how the subject of the male gaze was first introduced to me, and sort of give some advice on like how to, invo to avoid situations of accidental composition that may lead to the male gaze, and sort of explain some little bits on how I could have done better on the composition with these two pieces. Now these two pieces are pieces I'm doing for Melon and March, and if you don't know what Melon and March is, it is a challenge month created by Viana Bova in which you draw a person of color every day, and the purpose of this challenge is to help people with drawing more ethnically diverse characters, to sort of engage and create a more art-friendly environment that includes more diversity because in a lot of different art media diversity, especially ethnic diversity, is somewhat lacking. And this month gives you an opportunity to explore, get better, and conceptualize characters that maybe you wouldn't draw. So let's get on with the topics at hand. Placements. Placement is a pretty sim simple thing to explain. It's where you put the things. And if you've ever had an art class, say in middle school, high school, the easiest thing to explain with placement is background, middle ground, foreground. Now in this piece, there is strictly a background and foreground. The foreground is the subject character, the Alaskan Native girl. And this concept page is an Alaskan Native girl wearing a summery quest book and a wintery quest book. And I decided to do that because I'm from Alaska, kind of miss some of my friends, and I just, I really wanted to draw them they're they look comfy as all get out you can go berry picking and then come to a party and a, a cuss book and it's it's amazing <laughs> tangent but with that placement the character is in the foreground the background is a simple gradient and I guess you can say that the shadow is a middle ground it's a bit of value in between to show that there is distance between the foreground and background. And let's this leans into the next thing. What's composition? Composition is the amalgamation of all the things you'll learn in an art class coming together and is usually all the things used to create a final result. So composition is placement but also has to deal with color contrast, value, form, and the bonus sometimes of visual storytelling. And if I had to explain something that composition-wise maybe I could have decided not to do is that near the end of this elapsed footage you'll see that for half the screen on the summer spring cookbook side I decided to make it orange to give a distinction that this is to make you think more summery spring, and then for the more winter side, I stuck with blue, and could I have just stuck with the one gradient color? Yes, but in this instance it's a concept page, and it doesn't add or take away that I made two separate colors, but it could have been more cohesive had I chosen one color. And here's, here's going to be the, the meat of the discussion. What in the world, A.B., what in the world, Alexa, is the male gaze? 
or how I like to call it, is the pervert's gaze. And it's a composition that can be done either accidentally or intentionally, and I often find that it's a composition that's used to describe when well, okay, it's a term used to describe a composition in which everything draws attention to genitalia or the pelvic region, and most often times, this, if it's intentional, it's meant to accentuate sexiness or kind of create a sort of sexual response, and that's not necessarily meaning that it's pornographic. It just means that it's sexy, or extra sexy. And the way that this subject was brought up to me was by an art professor over how I drew fabric on characters, but most specifically how I drew fabric on female characters and how I chose to pose my characters. And something that I used to do a lot is that when I drew female characters, I would put a lot of attention on how the fabric would rest on the body. And with how the fabric would rest on the body, I would usually intentionally focus that, okay, fabric's going to gather near the crotch region. And what I would do is that I would spend more time drawing the folds, drawing the shadows in these areas with clothes where I thought fabric would obviously gather. But in a way, I was creating contrast in those areas where I was focusing more intention to draw fabrics in areas where I thought they would gather. And with this piece, this lovely chocolate man, um, I wanted to go for something that felt kind of sexy, but a casual kind of sexy. And where I wanted your attention to be was definitely on the face. And I think by focusing a lot of time on the face, though as unintentional as that might have been, I was pretty successful until by a certain point where I started to put more detail in the hand. Or at least put detail in the hand in such a way that it created either an equal or more amount of contrast to the area of the face. And when it comes to the unintentional composition in which male gaze can occur or pervert gaze can occur, it's usually when we're not thinking about it. Like the best way to avoid getting an unintentional reading into the image is to plan out everything and not just have it like not have it planned out to a hundred percent just plan everything out equally or in equal parts so that attention doesn't get accidentally pulled to the wrong area sort of like when you're doing gesture drawings you want to focus on the form as a whole and the movement of the form not the small details, because once you focus in more so on the small details instead of the entire form, you get a situation in which you have a hand that's the size of two heads. Or something also weird. <laughs> but I think when it came to drawing the hand, it was unintentional that I had got so much detail, and, well, it was somewhat intentional, but somewhat unintentional, but a way in which I corrected this is that later on when I went to do coloring and create a steamy effect from the shower, I would duplicate the layer and blur it out to sort of soften the edges and then erase the area near the face so that when I went to lower the opacity on the blurred out version, the face would be sharper when you looked at it. 
and the hands would be more blurred out and in a misty environment so it wouldn't draw attention. So in the sense like even though I gave a little bit too much detail into the hand, it's not going to be what you look at first. You're going to look at the form at as a whole in first. And you may be tempted to look down, but you'll also want to look back up at the face because the face has more contrast than say the hand at this point. I think at this point we have about a minute and a half left in the video. If you maybe want me to do a more in-depth video discussing more on composition, such as like the rule of thirds and other such rules, I can't think of them off the top of my head, and how that works, uh, give this a thumbs up, maybe put some of your suggestions or even link some of your favorite videos on composition and placement. You um, I have a bunch of different social medias that you can reach me at or just follow. I have a DeviantArt, a Tumblr, a Twitter, a Pinterest for resources, and all the other things I'm forgetting at the moment, but those will all be linked in the description down below. Uh, if you want to participate in Melon in March, go right ahead, join in on the fun, get in on your funky creation, creating character creation self. I hope that wherever you are, you are having a wonderfully creative day, and as always, guys, gals, and sketchy potato pals, make sure that you do what you do to make that artwork for you. Lots of love. Bye.